So there's definitely a lot of accessories and scope mounting options out there. And there's also a lot of accessories and tools for leveling your scope. Today, we're gonna check out F3R Machine's new 34 millimeter cantilever scope mount and its Picatinny rail adapters. I'm gonna be mounting the new Element Titan 5 to 25 by 56 scope that I will be doing a review on on my Remington 700 PCR that's been professionally hydro dipped from ATF Hydrographics. And I'm gonna show you guys one of the most reliable ways on leveling your scope, and it doesn't require any special tools. Then we're gonna take it out to the range and get it zeroed out within five shots. Stick around, you're gonna like this one. Okay, so mounting your scope and leveling doesn't take any science rocket knowledge. You do need some tools. One of them is a flashlight. The other one is a plumb bob or laser level. And you're gonna need some sort of inch pound torque wrench. This one's from Wheeler, the fat wrench. You're also gonna need the bubble level without the housing, just the level itself. So the main purpose of a cantilever mount is to allow your scope to sit forward of the Picatinny rail. This gives a little better balance as well as better eye relief. And in places where you have not much real estate, this allows you to mount your scope forward even though you ran out of Picatinny rail to clamp onto. So as you can tell, I'm pushing a little forward of the cantilever mount, allowing the built-in recoil lug on the actual cantilever to situate just behind the Picatinny rail. This allows a solid lockup so under recoil it doesn't move on you. The rail clamp screws use T25 and is recommended to do in two stages. Tighten down in a crisscross pattern starting from the middle bolt, you tighten down to 25 inch pounds and then go back and tighten up at 50 inch pounds. Then loosen up the scope cap nuts but don't take off the caps just yet. Take note of the orientation of the scope caps. These are one piece CNC machined, so each cap is marked on both the base and the cap with a binary dot matrix system. After rubbing down the scope mount and the scope itself with rubbing alcohol where it will be contacting, go ahead and situate the scope and have a cradle to set your eye relief. Make sure to reset your position multiple times. That way every time you get down behind the rifle, you're comfortable and it comes in clear view. This way you don't have to strain and do any kind of funky maneuvers behind the optic. And lastly, you want to check out the clearance on the front ocular. Now, I recommend at least a quarter inch. You'll be surprised how much a rifle really flexes. A lot of folks like to run that pretty tight, and it's not really recommended, especially when you got a high dollar optic behind your rifle. So before mounting the scope caps, you want to take a measurement of the center line of the scope to the bore axis. Now, with a high precision CNC cut of the F3R machine, you can utilize that little flat spot and go to the center line of the bore. On Remington 700 or similar actions, you can utilize the safety vent as a good reference mark for centerline bore. Now this number you can reference and use it for your ballistics app or a Kestrel. This allows you to calculate your dope properly. Now you can reinstall the scope caps making sure to match the witness marks. Now at this point you only want to tighten down the middle screws enough to where you can still manipulate the scope and turn it left and right. Okay, so now it's time to level out your optic. And the method we're going to use today is the projector method. And as I stated, yes, you're using your scope as a projector. And what you're going to be doing is projecting your reticle on the wall behind you. So I highly recommend to not use any of the tools that reference the scope cap, the turret, or the bottom of the scope to level out your optic. This is because the erector system is highly unlikely that it's in line with the flat spots of your optic. Now, when we're done leveling the scope, I'll actually prove this and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so with a laser level, or if you don't have one, use a plumb bob and hang it straight down on a white wall behind you. If you don't have a white wall, use a white piece of paper or a target like I did. You're essentially establishing a true reference line with gravity. That way when you align your scope, your scope will track true vertical. Even with a one degree reticle error cant, you can actually see your shot move diagonal from 600 yards or even further. And the further you get, the more it emphasizes this. So you want to use a lead slit or some kind of bipod with a canting feature. This allows you to put your bubble level on your Picatinny rail and level out the bubble level. The tripod I'm using is from Death X Squad. This is the Ace tripod. I'll put a link in the top right to check that out. Okay, so if you own an AR-15, more than likely you probably have some kind of tactical flashlight and a tactical flashlight mounts on a Picatinny rail. So here's a slick solution if you have some M-Lock and a chassis system to project that reticle on the wall. If not, you could go on Amazon and buy one of those barrel clamps to mount your flashlight or simply just hold your flashlight. 
In the description box below, I'll have a link for all the tools that I use today, so go ahead and check that out. So once you have your flashlight set up, you can use your rear eyepiece as a focus for your projector. Back out your eyepiece until you start seeing the actual reticle project clearly on the wall. I like to set my magnification for both first focal plane and second focal plane scopes to 12x with the lowest parallax, but you can play around with the magnification to get a clearer view. So to state the obvious, this needs to be done on a semi-dark room, that way you can see it. So once you have it projected on the wall, let's go ahead and align the reticle. But first you want to triple check your bubble level to make sure that on the Picatinny rail it is leveled. Turn your scope to match the reticle on the plumb bob or laser level. If you're satisfied with the results, now you're ready to torque down the scope caps. Starting from the center bolt, torque down in the crisscross pattern 16 inch pounds. Now I still have the thing projecting on the wall, that way when I'm torquing down the actual cap screws, I'm seeing if I'm affecting the reticle. Lastly, you want to make sure that your scope caps have about the same gap on both rings. If it looks good, you're ready to go. So folks, as I promised, here's the reason why I don't use my scope caps or turrets to level out my scope. As you can tell, the bubble level is slightly off on the right. However, the reticle projected on the wall is showing to be exactly true centerline. Now, it's even worse when I actually took off the scope cap. Even though I had a flatter surface, you can see the bubble level is on the line. However, the reticle is still trued on the wall. So unless your scope turrets are threaded on centers, it's highly unlikely that your erector system is going to match up to the flat surfaces of the scope body or turrets. So for final verification, you want to verify that your erector system is tracking vertically correct. So head out to your backyard or your front yard and reference something that is vertically true. For me, I'm referencing my barn. I know for sure that thing is vertically true because I spent a lot of time making that thing squared. So let's go ahead and run a vertical tracking test. You could also use a plumb bob and hang it on the fence line. Just another option. Make sure you run your turrets all the way down and all the way up. This way you can know for sure if you have any errors. So now for the fun part, we get to see if our hard work pays off. We're going to zero out this rifle using the bore sighting method. If you have a cheek riser, go ahead and remove it. If you have an adjustable stock, go ahead and try to remove that adjustment so you can look down the bore of the rifle. If you have a folding stock, that's ideal. So go ahead and remove your bolt and what you're going to do is look down the actual barrel of your rifle. Using your barrel of your rifle, just like a peep sight, you're going to aim the actual center line of the bore on your target. If you're having difficulty seeing down the bore of your rifle, it doesn't have to have a clear picture, but you can move your target closer to 25 yards or 50. That way when you get the 100 yards, you could actually be on paper. For me, I'm using a 36 inch by 46 inch piece of cardboard paper. And since I got young eyes, I'm not too worried about my target cam. I seem to get lucky on paper every single time so far. So referencing your bore sight, you want to make scope adjustments to the best of your ability. Double checking and triple checking between the bore sight and your scope picture, you want to center your scope as best as you can. And for obvious reasons, you want to pick the middle of your target. So the target cam I'm using is called the Eagle Target Cam. I sell these on my website. It has the ability to get out to 2600 yards and on the Android app, it has a unique feature to review your shots and highlights them. It works perfectly for scenarios like this when you're trying to zero out your rifle at whatever distance. I'm on paper, <laughs> but it's the uh, bottom right. I'm going to shoot for a group before I adjust. But using the scope, I'm at pretty much one and a half. I say 1.7. Now if you're a hunter and cold bore shots really count, you want to go ahead and zero out on your cold bore shot. But a lot of factors contribute to this. One of them is being that this is a freshly mounted scope, so things are settling in. And also if you freshly clean the bore of your rifle, you will get a point of impact change as well. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and shoot for a group and see where it ends up being. All right, so cold bore impact is definitely high, and it is about 0.3 high. So using the scope, 
we are roughly two mils low and about a mil and a half right. So we need to come up two mils and a mil and a half left. So perhaps you're new or not proficient on adjusting your scope. All you have to remember is that the scope adjustments adjust your point of impact. So if you shot in an impacted right, you need to come left. If you shot in an impacted low, you need to come up. So remember that it's adjusting your point of impact, not your reticle. All right, this is 40.7 grains, 0.2 grains more. About half a mil left. Well folks, there we have it. On the fourth shot, I'm pretty much well centered. I went up 0.1 and almost went off target. That's a half inch target. And with a MRAD scope, the adjustments are around 3 eighths of an inch compared to an MOA scope, which is a quarter. So at this point, you're pretty much splitting hairs. So if your rifle's shooting consistent, now you can go ahead and re-zero your turrets. Now, if you're wondering what's on top of my scope, that is an LRI sended unit. It's a digital level. And with the new Picatinny accessories from F3R Machine, offered in three different sizes, it allows me to put that sentient unit on top. Now what's pretty cool about that is when I shoot with both eyes open, it superimposes the LED lights on top of the reticle. So it's very nifty for PRS shooting. Well folks, that's all I got. I really hope that this video helps you guys out there for an easy and painless way to mount and level your scope and get it zeroed on paper. If you don't have these tools that you've seen in the video, check out the description box below. I'll have links below with everything that I use in this video. Well folks, God bless, take care, stick around, there's always more videos. I got this Titan scope that I will be reviewing. And like I said, check out F3R Machine. They make some awesome precision CNC scope mounts. They are by far one of the best rugged and best bang for your buck scope mounts that you can purchase for your money. And if you use the code EAGLE10, you'll get 10% off your purchase. So go ahead, check out F3R Machine. Again, link in the description below. As always, folks, stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all on the next video.